Resuming debate, the reprise de débat, the Honourable Member for Elgin, Middlesex, London. Madam Speaker, thank you so much for the time today so that we can discuss this. I have, have listened to much of this debate. Luckily, I'm on House duty today, and it has been a very good debate, especially on this side where we're talking about this. So to begin, I really hope that the member from Avalon will not be mocking people yeah. as I read the it's letters that I have received from people throughout Canada, yeah. from East Coast to West Coast, that are telling us Please stand up for us. And so I'm, I'm hoping that I don't hear the snickering and, and that we have to don't be, not be partisan because the bottom line is it is in the best interest of Canadians. And that's what I want to remind everybody in here. We have heard a lot of back and forth today. I, ha I was not part of the previous 2000 in the government, but I'll be honest, I worked for a member of parliament during that time and I was very proud of the work that we did. But I don't want this to be a partisan debate. This is about the security and the safety of fellow Canadians, the security and safety of refugees that sought Canada to get away from the, the terror that was happening within their own countries. And unfortunately, I think we're forgetting that during this debate. So I, I'm really hoping that the members can listen to this. Last week, we saw on Tuesday, of course, it was the uh, very historical day for this, for this uh, Prime Minister, as he indicated. It was his apology to the LGBTQ2 community. And at that same time, we saw all four other leaders stand forward and also put forth the apologies and, su and support that apology. Within two hours of that apology, I started receiving emails from Muslim gay men. And within the next day, I had a group come to me. So in less than 24 hours after that apology, they came to me fearing their lives. So I, I sat with them and said, because they recognized that my work with the LGBTQ community, that I, I was on their side and that their thoughts mattered. And this is why I want to bring their letters today. I've got 10 in my hand right now, but I can tell you by the time I get home, I'm sure I'm going to have more and more and more, because just over a couple of days, they started contacting me, a member that they may not know or a member that they heard, but they knew that there were, I was on their side. For their own security, I will not be reading their names because one of the gentlemen have already been targeted on Facebook, saying that they are coming after him. So I just am hoping that all members can listen and not comment because this is really atrocities to our, our, to our public security. My name is YC, as in initials. I'm a 30-year-old gay Muslim. I was born in a small town in eastern Turkey, close to the Syrian border named Qatar. My town officially run by Turkish government, but unofficially run by mullahs and radical Islamists. In a very early age, I was aware of my sexual interest. Growing up, I heard about three homosexuals, and their stories were scary enough for the rest of the homosexuals to hide themselves. One of them was buried alive by this Islamic relatives, despite all of the pressure his family would not kill him, and relatives see Abraham, people called him Ibu, dishonor to their tribe. Ibu was one of the first victims of gay honor killing that I have heard of, who I have met in personal growing up in the same neighborhood. The second gay man that I heard of was from a nearby village. All we heard is that the family cleaned its honor and buried him alive. Third person I knew of was Hulsi. People called him all kinds of names, male dog, uh, top, Turkish stand for, for fag, IBNE, insult for gay people similar to fag, raping him, harassing him, beating him. You know, I, I sit here and I'm just sitting here going, oh my gosh, and this is what we're welcoming. Unbelievable. His family is open-minded compared to Islamic, and what they did not, and they did not kill him. Instead, they put him in a mental hospital. Some said that they were worried that his relatives were Islamic terrorists and that they would kill him. On Tuesday, when the prime minister apologized and mentioned all of the LGBTQ2 people around the world, I was happy. Finally, someone was going to uncover the pain of my forgotten communities around the world. Finally, someone is going to be the voice to gay Muslims who are being victims of honor killings. All of my memories, all of my fear, all of my pain of growing up as a gay man in a very religious town passed through my eyes. I was free, and there might be a chance to free other gay Muslims. After I left the gallery chatting with some people, I heard that the Prime Minister is trying to bring ISIS members back. I was in shock, and I did not believe them. I went home and did my research and found out that they were right. Our Prime Minister, who spoke for the LGBTQ community writes about imporing enemy of this community people and enemy of the humanity. The Prime Minister is not only bringing those terrorists back, but their ideal ideology. In addition, the Prime Minister is sending a wrong message to this community, those who have raped, 
killed, tortured gay people in Muslim countries, and a heartbreaking message to this community in Muslim countries were suffered by Islamists. Maybe being an openly gay Muslim activist and my friends who are fighting for the liberation of Muslims of the community are in fear. We are afraid to lose our freedom of speech, freedom to walk in our beautiful cities without being fear of being attacked. I hope this will in turn be a non-partisan action and stop this tragedy before it is too late. The Prime Minister is constantly talking about constitutional rights. I guess we Canadians have the same constitutional rights and we must be protected, feel safe and secure. Now I have a number of others, so hopefully, Madam Speaker, you will say, Karen, you've got a couple more minutes here. I Dear member, she can't use her first name or her last name or the name of somebody else that's already sitting in the House. Uh, resuming debate. Dear Blank, my name is F. I am a gay man from Iran who escaped persecution. I am a member of a gay Middle Eastern group with my friend Yus uh, Y and O. Recently, I read Canadian governments bringing back ISIS people. I'm in shock and fear to know ISIS people are going to be living in our cities. I escaped persecution two times in Iran to Turkey, Turkey to Canada. We have we, no other place to go. Please help us stop ISIS members coming into this country. Instead of wasting our taxpayers on helping peace, people who have worked with ISIS, empower gay Middle Eastern people who have been persecuted by Islamic regimes instead. Hello, I'm writing to you concerning the government's wish on trying to reintegrate ex-ISIS militants back into Canadian society. I believe that this is a grave mistake that uh, could have tragic outcomes. These people decided to leave Canadian society and throw away their values, uh, the values that we hold dear to our hearts, in order to join an extremist ideology that have killed scores of innocent people, including children. They believe in beheading and burning alive those who don't submit their twisted views, and they have wreaked havoc, wreaked havoc all over the world. There is no guarantee that attempts to rehabilitate these uh, terrorists will be successful. Frankly, this is a, not a risk I am willing to take. In the event that even one of these people decides to commit another act of terrorist, lives will be lost. It is worth risking our nation's civilians to try and help those who have already decided to slaughter us. Is this a risk really worth bringing them back into the neighbourhoods? I would rather leave them in jail than put them on, in, on the lives of citizens. And he continues to write, but I think we're kind of getting the idea here. Madam Speaker, how much time do I have left? So you know, if I could find the best letter, but we'll keep up with this one. Dear, Karen, dear Blank, I'm a brown Canadian who immigrated here from the Middle East, where I could not enjoy my freedom. When I came to Canada, I realized how beautiful and peaceable and secure life is. I enjoy walking with my children with, without fear. I enjoy speaking my mind with without fear, but I now fear being attacked. I enjoy my individual freedom in my beautiful home here in Canada. Recently, I heard that ISIS coming back to Canada under the rehabilitation program. May I dear those people who stepped on our constitution fought against our heroes, killed our allies, raped women, children, and should not be allowed to walk among us. They should be in prison. They made their choice. We did not want to lose our freedom because of the wrong choice. We did not want to leave them in fear because they are ideology. Help us, MK. Now I'm going to put the rest of these on record. I know with a, with a speech, I probably can put them all through as part of this. But what I really wanted to bring here today was we're talking about politics. We're talking about conservatives. We're talking about liberals. We got to stop talking about that. We got to start talking about the people that are now fearing for their lives. There are people out there every day that are living in terror and and fear, especially these specific this specific community. Last week we were embracing them, and this week they feel like they're being thrown to the wolves. So I just ask, instead of making this partisan that I've seen, let's talk about these people that have to walk down the streets and realize that somebody that they may have known over their time or may have seen in a photograph, a variety of different things, they may be out there to target them. Don't, like, let's not put our heads in the sand here. These are people's lives. And what are the rights of people who have lived in Canada, who have fought for Canada, who find Canada their home? What do their rights become less than the rights of, of terrorists, less than those terrorist fighters that went over there and now coming back? They left Canada. I recognize that this could be a constitutional issue, but let's put our heads on and let's put our hearts on and recognize that there are people in fear because of government's decisions. So I am asking this government to look at their policies that they're making and to start having conversations with these groups that are now being attacked. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Questions and comments? Questions and commentaires? The Honourable Member for Central Nova. 
Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And it's always a pleasure to engage with my uh, colleague who serves as the chair of the Status of Women Committee, and it's my pleasure to sit on that committee alongside her. Uh, now, if I, I sat and listened to the remarks I just heard at home and accepted everything I heard uh, verbatim to be the case, I could see why that would inspire fear in me. But facts matter greatly, and we owe it to Canadians to be, be factual and give them the opportunity to be engaged in a nuanced debate. Uh, will the honourable member opposite acknowledge that the number that the minister indicated of, of extreme travellers who are in Canada today is in the same order of magnitude uh, that was here under the previous government? This is not some partisan initiative to welcome ISIS fighters to, to Canada in large numbers. This is something she can do today to help put the fears at ease of Canadians to understand that there is no program to bring ISIS fighters into our country in big numbers. Our member for Elgin, Middlesex, London. I'd really like to thank the member. There are two points here that I want to make. First of all, the numbers that you are using may be inaccurate. Secondly, part of, and this is where I'm going to have to put a partisan hat on here, unfortunately, but we had an uh, uh, idea of a travel ban. People who are going to those countries that do not need to go there, we should be questioning why they're there in the first place. And I know that this government, we have to see, this was part of the Conservative platform in 2015, was that we're going to look at a region, and if people were traveling that were Canadian, going to regions that they had no business going to, it was going to be deemed that they were probably fighting for ISIS. And so I think we need to look at that. I'm not sure if this government has put any in, in any of those provisions, but I, honestly, I think we have to look at it from all angles. Questions and comments? Questions et commentaires? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary of the Government House Leader. Yes, uh, Madam Speaker, I'd like to pick on, continue on the line of questioning that my colleague had asked. Surely to goodness the member across the way would recognize that, in fact, this is nothing that's new. This actually took place when Stephen Harper was the Prime Minister. And, you know, Madam Speaker, I think that there's, there's a fine line that we've got to be careful not to cross. You know, the Conservatives have consistently tried to put on this spin as if you have these active terrorists coming over to Canada as if it's something completely uh, new. If they are a terrorist and they are identified as a terrorist, there is a consequence, a very real and tangible consequence. Stephen Harper, when he was Prime Minister, ensured that that was the case. Uh, and the current Prime Minister, there's not one member of the House of Commons that supports terrorism, uh, uh, Madam Speaker. We all want to, to fight terrorism. So, so the question is specifically, what is it that, is, that uh, Stephen Harper did that was any different than what we are doing? We rely on those individuals that have the expertise to ensure that Canadians are safe, and they are safe. The Honourable Member for Elgin, Middlesex, London. Well, well, thank you very much for using our, our former Prime Minister as an example. He did a great job, and I would recommend that. But let's be honest here. We are seeing some changes as well. But today, we have people that are still writing us. If they felt that our, this government, and any government, I'm not saying the previous government did all of the right things on here, because guess what? There were still terrorist attacks. There were still some people that, in even Strathroy, Ontario, that were looking at doing things in our own great country that were raised here and radicalized here. There is not a perfect option to this, and that is why I'm urging you for consultations. The word consultation is used all the time, but please start listening to the people. Please start giving rights back to Canadians who have not gone against our own country like these ISIS fighters have. That is what I'm asking. Let's actually ask those questions. Are we going to have them sign up for a group? Do we know? Is it going to be like a program where you have to go to AA, but it's got to be on by your choice? Are we going to say, well, that's your right? If there's ISIS fighters, or do they still have the same rights as a person who's on alcohol? Those might sound crazy, but that's where I'm fearing we're going to go. It's going to be the right of that person and not the obligation to this country. So I'm very fearful on how this will go out. I've seen other things roll out from this government as well, so I'm a little skeptical. Resuming debate, uh, reprise the debate. The